Good day. This, today I'm going to talk to you about some research news from our Medical College of Wisconsin ALS program. I have the privilege of having been the uh, founder of the program back in the late 1990s and I'm now the co-director. And this pertains to a project called High Density Surface EMG Based CMAP Scan for Motor Unit Number Estimation, a rather long title which I will break down for you. This is going to be done by my colleague Dr. Xiaoyan Li as well as myself. This project is possible due to Dr. Li submitting a successful NIH Exploratory Developmental Research Grant Award uh, which was uh, granted to her and is called an R21. She is a biomedical engineer who will be the principal investigator. The goal of this project will be to compare some electrophysiological techniques to see which may be the optimal way to be a non-invasive biomarker in tracking ALS, ALS progression. This will be achieved by means of serial testing both in control or normal subjects as well as subjects with ALS. I'm not going to give all the details, but to give you a little quick overview, I need to tell you about some of the things we measure and some, many of you are already familiar with this because you've had a, a procedure called an EMG uh, for the diagnosis of ALS, which is one of our more important tests to determine whether or not the disease is present. The signal we get when we stimulate a motor nerve where you see the uh, stimulator in the bottom right box where the hand is, uh, we stimulate and then record signals. Now, there are different sites there called A, B, C, D, E, and you see those in the uh, box next to it. The best signal came from position C. So it's important that after we get a uh, sufficient stimulus delivered to get a reproducible signal, we move the recording electrode around so we get the best signal. And that's the entire basis of this entire uh, project. Now, when I give lectures to medical audiences on electrophysiology and I show this basic waveform, the CMAP, as this red outline, I tell them it's a bit like a pinata. The outside sim seems simple, but it's the inside that's the most interesting. And the question is, how can we discover this? Again, using that red squiggly line in the top right that says compound muscle potential, you see inside of it a lot of little circles with uh, brown uh, uh, background inside of it. And this is what we would call a motor unit. The motor unit is the building block of the CMAP. So each motor neuron in the spinal cord sends down its axon to then innervate X number of muscle fibers. And this is called a motor unit. A muscle is basically a collection of motor units. And what we want to do is deconstruct the CMAP into its component motor units. Now we can use different techniques in this the first being what we call MUNIX or motor unit number indexing, which is actually a hometown or Milwaukee uh, procedure that was developed by Dr. Nandadkar and myself back in the early 2000s and is now accepted as a good biomarker and is currently being used in several ALS therapeutic trials. The second is called CMAP scanning which I'll discuss in a moment. And we don't know as much about this, certainly with respect to serial studies. And lastly is the high density surface EMG, which is being used by very few medical centers um, nationally and internationally. 
And uh, our medical center here back in uh, 2010, going onward a few years, we did a number of studies using high density surface EMG with uh, Dr. Lee's husband, uh, Dr. Ping Zhu. So what we basically want to do is um, do a contrast study using these different techniques head to head uh, in the same subjects and, and at the same interval so we have a better sense of how they stack up against each other. With motor unit number indexing, uh, the starting point is the CMAP as you see here in this slide. The beauty of this technique is that it's non-invasive. So all we need is a few stimulations to record the CMAP, which I just showed you. And then the subject activates their muscle, the muscle being studied from a small amount of effort, which you see in the top line, going down to the bottom line where you see larger uh, amplitude or large size squiggles there on the screen, which means the motor units are really firing at high level of effort. The computer program then converts this into uh, surface interfer interference pattern, SIP uh, area, and based on the levels of effort which you see on the bottom uh, as you go from 0 to 200 to 400 the area increases with increasing level of effort and decreasing level of effort goes to the left and it's not a very intuitive uh, program but we've tested it many times and basically it's pretty reliable for giving us a sense of how many motor units are in that muscle. Now it is an index, it's not an absolute count. It's impossible with our techniques and technology as it is now, particularly non-invasive, to uh, be able to measure from the entire muscle. So what's the importance of this? Well, it, it's terrific. We are just publishing a paper in collaboration with colleagues in the United Kingdom and Switzerland uh, showing that we can uh, show that the number of motor units are decreased in ALS patients even before they have loss of strength. So here we have a CMAP, if you follow my cursor here, and it's 11.7 millivolts high, and it contains 132 motor units, a few of which are already becoming a little denser from the disease. And then with progression over time, you see that the amplitude of the CMAP doesn't change a whole lot. It's fairly stable. This is a biologic system, not an atomic clock. So there's going to be some inherent variability even if we test a normal person. But notice over time we go from 132 motor units to 67 to 64 to 50. And here we have many fewer motor units inside making the CMAP amplitude what you see. And this is the trick in trying to develop treatments for this disease is to catch it here when we know that that's already being affected. Now I'm being overly simplistic here. Um, in patients that have faster progression, we'll see a drop here much faster. But obviously here, this is where we would hope to have the most uh, uh, possibility for therapeutic uh, intervention. Well, let's now uh, quickly talk about CMAP scans. Here you see uh, the CMAP at its maximum and this is where uh, the signal is very small. And the reason there's a decrease here is because this is at the maximum stimulus needed to get this response. And here we're getting to where it almost disappears because the stimulus is so low. The computer program generates a series of stimuli at X rate per second and at each point it delivers a stimulus so 
you have a scan, as they call it, of decreasing stimulations or stimuli, number of stimuli uh, delivered to that uh, nerve supplying that muscle. So you see this steady decline. And what this looks like on the scan is you he see here a stable number uh, because the stimulus hasn't changed. And then as soon as it starts to decrease, you have a slow decline that usually looks almost like an S, we call a sigmoid curve. And this is normal. What happens in ALS with a CMAP scan? Well, here one sees as you go down, there are very obvious steps here because there's fewer motor units. And down here, it's very telling. You see these big gaps here as you deliver uh, serial stimuli. And this goes over to here where you see big gaps and drop as you decrease the stimulus. Now this technique requires more stimulations, but they're not all at a high uh, level that you need to get the maximum response. Over a couple of minutes, they start to taper down to where it's imperceptible. Now, what's high-density EMG? Well, I didn't show you a picture of our electrode that we uh, used to get the CMAP, but it basically is a circle electrode that is about a half an inch in diameter. Here, you see a larger electrode that has a lot of little dots here. Each of these is a separate electrode, and there are 64 total. So we call this high density because there are many, many, many electrodes viewing the signal that's being recorded. And this is unique and has not been done before. And Dr. Lee and her husband, Dr. Zhu, both are uh, well versed in this particular technique. And they wanna bring this to the other two techniques to see if we can deconstruct these motor or uh, compound muscle action potentials uh, even more so. So this is what's unique about uh, this project. So we have not made a final, final protocol, but uh, fairly close to it. So we're going to enroll, hopefully, uh, about 15 patients with ALS. There would be some exclusion criteria. All ALS patients will be studied the same week, so it's important to be available. And they will be studied at approximately three month intervals. The normal controls will be younger in the sense of they'll be between ages 20 to 60, and we'll need approximately 30 to reach a statistically significant uh, level for interpreting the data. Uh, the ALS patients will be tested at a baseline and then at <clears throat> 3, 6, 9, and 12 months. Uh, the controls will only need to be tested two to maybe three times to ensure reproducibility of our results. Each session will run about 90 to 120 minutes, so it is a bit of a time commitment. So we need to be sure that uh, anyone volunteering is um, able to uh, fulfill the obligation of uh, coming in to uh, participate in the study uh, fully as much as possible. So exclusion criteria as it sits now would be the inability to complete uh, the year of testing uh, because that would um, make our data points uh, suffer uh, tremendously. Uh, we would like uh, the patients uh, with ALS to have an onset of uh, 15 months or less, and we have to make sure they do not have a polyneuropathy like from diabetes or carpal tunnel syndrome or ulnar neuropathies uh, or a history of cervical or lumbar or low back radiculopathy or root problems, including spine surgery. Generally, most patients have had an EMG, uh, and certainly if it was done at uh, Freighter to, as part of our program, we would be able to tell immediately whether or not uh, some of these entities uh, are present.
once we have the protocol in place, we will put out a flyer in clinic uh, as well as um, asking around who might be uh, interested. And of course, individuals living as close as possible to the medical center uh, would uh, find the travel part uh, certainly uh, about the easiest. So uh, if you do qualify for the study, we certainly do greatly appreciate it. Uh, as far as your participation and commitment uh, because our Munich and high density EMG studies in the past were all the result of fantastic, fantastic collaboration and cooperation by our wonderful patients, without which we never would have been able to bring Munich uh, to uh, the attention of colleagues uh, internationally who then in turn uh, worked with their programs and we were able to show ultimately that it was a very good biomarker and we hope to uh, continue uh, to do good things. So with that I will say thank you for your attention and namaste meaning thank you, thank you. We appreciate everything that you do in helping us uh, provide good care, which is of course our commitment, both clinical care, research, and education.